Hey, listen up. You could go listen to the same old boring radio. You know, the same five songs 50 million times a day. You could zone out to your favorite MP3. Till can't get that ringing out of my head. I'm sure you heard all the drone podcast mumbo jumbo. I'm here to do my radio show. Don't you deserve more for your hard-earned money? On Teal Time Radio, you get entertainment value. We take pride in our shows and don't release junk. You won't find anywhere else. So if you're a diehard Jags fan like me, or a reality TV nut like my old lady, or a non-stop gamer like my son, you want the best entertainment your money can buy. Heck yeah! So give us a chance. We will make you laugh yourself right off of your chair. And isn't that what life is about? Having a good time listening to something you love? So sit back, relax, and have a cold one. And be sure to join us on Teal Time Radio, the only Wizard Media podcast app that really knocks your socks off. New stuff added nearly every day. Check back often. Guaranteed you won't find more content anywhere for under two bucks. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Stream Time, a Teal Time Radio production. I'm your host, C.T. Jags, and alongside of me, the beautiful Miss Chrissy. Hey, everybody. Now, to, on today's show, we're going to go a little different as far as reality TV. We're going to hit up the top show, Bar Rescue. It's a good show. I really like it. I like how the guy tries to go in and tries to save some of these bars, but some of these people are just too stubborn. They want to go back to their old ways. And I I agree with that. I think he's either trying to, this would be, let's see here. His name is John Tapper. Yep, John is a very good, uh, what he does, he's been doing this for years and years and years. And uh, some of these people just don't want to listen to him. Ex- exactly. They don't want to listen to him at all. And basically what happens is it's either on the verge of closing the bar, or there's a hidden agenda in some way, shape, or form to say, well, hey, we're going to bring in this expert, and if they can't turn it around, forget about it. It's a lost cause. Or they might be just saying, well, you know what? This guy came in to help us, but you know what? I don't believe him. This bar ain't going to be saved, so we're just going to let it close. Just let him do what he's got to do, which is sad because John puts all his time and effort into this show, you know, to get the bars up nice. He even teaches them how to cook. He redoes their bars. He does everything he can to help these people, and they just don't seem to want the help. Exactly. You know, I'm going to talk about this one episode that sticks out was when they had this pirate bar. And I don't have anything wrong with the pirate bar. Yeah, it was by some corporate, you know, bunch of corporate buildings and whatnot. And I understand, you know, when John came in, he, you know, was trying to change it to something that the corporate... uh, World would accept. Exactly, but... I don't necessarily think how he went about it was the right way. Maybe he could have changed it to something they all could have agreed on or something. But a pirate bar made no sense. And that part of town, and the cook couldn't even cook? What yeah. is that? I wouldn't eat that garbage that he was feeding people. Ah, oh, yeah, that, sorry. That, that's the main thing. You, you have, you know, the wife is the owner, and then you have the head cook, which is the husband, the boyfriend, whatever he is. But he runs the show. But he doesn't know what he's doing. Exactly. I mean, if we're going to run a business, you're going to run it 50-50, husband and wife. You both have say yes, but you talk about things and you decide together. Well, we're going to do this this way and that that way. And it seemed like it was either his way or the highway, and he just was, a, you know, a smart aleck about everything. So anyway, in the show, they had it as this pirate bar, and John comes in. And, you know, he sees the things that's wrong. Well, first, you know, it's a pirate-themed bar in the middle of corporate America, basically, with all them corporate buildings right around. And he seen, you know, it had a lot of potential. But as every show has showed, has shown, that even though you bring in the right people and you try to train people to do the right thing, if people aren't willing to listen or aren't willing to, you know, sacrifice, which the lady stated, you know, from the get-go, she wasn't willing to change. At that point, I, me being John... I would have pulled out and I would have just pulled the plug, exactly. I would have said, you know what? Okay, then. Your bar's closed as of right now. End of story. I'm not wasting my money, they wasting my time, nothing. Exactly, because it only ended up a health code violation anyway. Exactly. It was the most awful food. It was dirty looking. That bar looked nasty. 
If I walked in that bar, I'm sorry, but I would have walked right back out. Did you see how dirty that bar looked? It was crazy. That it, kitchen was nasty. Ugh. It was absolutely crazy. It gave a new meaning to, you know, dirt infested. I don't even know how it stayed open as long as it... I'm surprised they don't have cockroaches, never mind dirt. I'm surprised there weren't cockroaches in that place. Exactly. And it, the funny thing is, you've got the bartenders that don't know how to make drinks. You've got the cooks that don't know how to make food. And then you run in this thing, you know, saying pirate theme. Yes. Yahoy and all all this and even got people in character. That's wonderful, but they had it didn't seem like they had much of customer service experience this is either. Not Disney World. That's a Disney World thing. Disney World would be where the pirate theme would fit in with Captain Hook and all of that. But this is definitely not Disney World. Come on, really, people? So anyway, you know, John comes in, he does the best job he can, and, you know, they're not willing to work with him. They hire a new cook because evidently the husband, or the boyfriend, whoever the heck he is, just can't cook. So they have him running, you know, running back and forth from the tables and everything, and he's not happy with it, and I understand that is, you know, it's his own, his own thing, and, you know, he can feel disrespected and whatnot, and who the heck are these people, you know, trying to exactly. change us? But at the same token, I don't understand why he was unwilling to change at all, why he wouldn't pick up a cookbook or something. If I would have asked John to hire somebody to help me then. I don't know how to cook. Teach me so I can make everything good and have people enjoy my bar. And then if I wanted to go back to the, the, the pirate team, thinking it works for me, at least you know how to cook better. I think the main thing was he just liked the fact of being in charge. He liked the fact of, that he can order people around and everybody was his lack. Even though he didn't know what he was doing, he didn't know how to run things, he had no idea. And she really should have just left left his butt somewhere. Exactly. I was in the back where he came from. Or, you know, at least, you know, keep the relationship. But, I mean, John, John made a valid point. You know, supposedly the lady was... In the, you know, in her parents' basement. Exactly. Okay? You run a res restaurant, you you got to have more for yourself than just being in, in a basement. you got to at least want your own house, your, your own something, you know. I mean, God, even I want my own house someday. I don't want to live in, some, I wanna live in somebody's basement. I don't live in anybody's basement, but I wouldn't want to if that was me. Heck no. I'd be like, I'm buying my own house, something. But he made the business go down even worse. So, so anyway, a long story short, John, you know, changes the whole aspect of the thing. Now, I understand what he did as far as changing, you know, the bar from, you know, the Pirates Bar to, you know, Corporate Bar and Grill because of all the, you know, different offices around the area. However, he really, in my eyes, didn't really need to change it to saying the word corporate. I think it could have still had a pirate theme if he was willing to work with them. You know, on some nights, like they could have had a pirate theme on one night, and they could have had, uh, you know, maybe a, a cop theme on another night. Or yeah, make it more interesting for the people. Yeah, I agree. Exactly. Exactly. It just didn't make any sense to, to me. It seemed like John was tired of their, you know, crap, and he wanted to do what he wanted to do to, yep. you know, increase profits and show, you know, the rest of the world, well, either this bar, you know, is good or it's trash. Exactly. But John should have worked with them more and said, hey, guys, how can we do this so that we're all happy and that we can run a successful bar? Like you said, I think the theme thing would be cool because if I was living in that area and I heard of a bar that had themes every night, a different theme, I'd be like, wow, I want to go there and see what theme they're going to have tonight. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Even if during the week, you know, during lunchtime, you keep it, you know, corporate and whatnot. Yeah, during the week, during lunch, exactly. Keep it corporate. But on the weekends... Especially, not, not, maybe even, not in the afternoons, but maybe at night, you know. Every night, have a different theme for, like, a Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday night. Or, you know, something like that. Why couldn't they change the name, in my eyes, to, like, Pirates Bay, Corporate Hangout, or something? Yeah. Something that, you know, keeps the pirate name. But I do understand, as far as profit-wise... There really is no use for a pirate thing in the middle of a downtown where it's not all, you know, 
crazy and with different types of people. This, you know, this wasn't New York. This wasn't California. This I was wasn't just thinking Vegas. thinking that, right. Vegas, it would have been fine. Or, or New Orleans or somewhere like that. Even Orlando, Orlando kind of with like yeah. the Universal Studios and everything. That's what I'm saying. This isn't, this isn't Florida, you know. That's a Florida theme, I mean, or a California theme for their, you know. Maybe they should have just, if they weren't happy with what was going on, maybe they should have just relocated. Maybe. Or talk to John and went to John to begin with and said, look, John, you know what? I'm not happy with it like this. Can we do something so that everybody's happy? You, me, and corporate America. And and the thing is, the ones I feel sorry about are, you know, the wait staff that are busting their tails to adjust the things and trying to follow the right things just for John to change everything, and he changed it real nice. But after John leaves, two days later, from what I'm seeing, is it resorts back to the same old. Yep. Which, which basically states... You know, which is the case in most of John's shows. You can you can soup up any car, but if it's a lemon, it's gonna stay a lemon. It's gonna remain that way. Exactly. Well, you know what? That's a kick in the butt for John. That he, you know, he went to all this uh, trouble to help them, and then they did that to him. Well, that's kind of a kick in the butt, you know. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It's absolutely crazy. You know what, though? I seen a different episode where uh, they had this like uh, cheeky bar. It was. I forgot the name of it at the time, but it was an exact replica of the bar right across from it. Mm -hmm. And they had these green cups, but they looked exactly like the other. Why would you copy somebody else? Why wouldn't you want to have your own idea, your own agenda? Like I tell my son, you know what? You got to grow up and be your own person. Well, they should have grown up and had their own kind of bar. Well, I, I think it was a, a vendetta from what I, from what the boss was saying. They got beat out of one thing, you know, in a legal battle, and then they just wanted to keep, you know, the legend moving on. That's immaturity. Come on. Are we in high school, grammar school, middle school? But, what is it? But New Orleans, you know, a place place of party central in my eyes. They have the Mardi Gras and everything else. There's a million other themes in in, in, uh, in New Orleans, you know, that you could have used. Now, I like what that's what it came out to be, though, where he made those blue cups with the blue drinks. Exactly, and they sparkled and they lit up and everything. Yup, and everybody said, well, where'd you get those? I want one of those. And then they had the old barber chair. Exactly, and they, they used that as a shot, shot, shot glass chair. Shot yep. And all the teenage, of course, you know, all the teenagers come down there for spring break or whatever. They're in those, that shot chair getting those shots. But the whole thing I liked about it, and I'm sorry, we don't mean to go back and forth and everything, but in the beginning of the show, it showed, you know, the owner was, wanted change, but he was reluctant to it. And then oh, the, the manager that was ahead of that, you know, thought he knew it all, and as it turned out, he didn't, but he accepted the fact that he didn't, and he was able to take responsibility and say, well, hey, i got to step my game up. Exactly. And, and improve. Whereas the ones from the pirate thing, they... The more like, willing to do anything. Yeah, if you if you're not willing, you're really just wasting John's time. Time, yeah. So at least at the other bar, the tiki bar, they at least were willing to learn how to make different drinks, and they were willing to change the name of their bar and and you know step it up a little, which is cool. And it was something you know simple, it was a simple menu. But really, when you go out to a bar, you're not really looking to get a full course meal anyway. No, when you go out to a bar, you want you know have drinks and maybe a little appetizer and that's it. You're not going to eat a full meal. Nobody's going to keep drinking if they eat a full meal. You have an appetizer, then guess what? You still got room for drinks or shots or whatever. Exactly. And I mean, if they do have, you know, some kind of meal, if it's something small like a sandwich or something. Oh, yeah, that's different. Because everybody does, you know, get the munchies or most people do when they're, you know, drinking right. and well, doing who, whatever they're doing. Well, who wants to have a full steak, potatoes? And vegetables, let's say, and then go drinking? No, that's too much. Yeah, somebody would puke. Yes, They'd exactly. They'd be puking all over Bourbon Street. Exactly. Which is crazy because it ended up, the name of the new bar ended up, um, I think it was Bourbon Spirit. Yeah, it was. Because it was supposed to be haunted by a spirit of somebody that had originally owned it, I think it was. Yeah, exactly. And we liked how the makeover came out and whatnot. Yes, it came out real nice. We thought that John did a heck of a job. I think he does a heck of a job on the equipment. The thing that I have to wonder, though, when he leaves 
and the bar becomes whatever, you know, the new... Does he take the equipment with him as in, okay, yeah, I helped you out, but now you have to, you know, buy the equipment? Oh, I don't know. See that? I wonder. It never tells you, but no, I wouldn't think so. I wouldn't think he would buy the equipment and then just get, take it back. Yes, but I'm sure he's not spending $100,000 for this bar just to he's have no kind of repayment. Yeah, I'm sure they must work out something, or he might buy the equipment used. It's still like brand new and maybe, you know, maybe people donate to him too. We never know. They yeah. may donate equipment from places that close down. But even bar equipment used is still expensive, real expensive. And I wonder why some of these bars are shutting down. Could it be because he's bringing these equipment in and they just can't manage the upkeep of it? If the machine breaks down, how much does it cost to fix? Do they have the... You you know, the inventory. Or the means or the money to yeah. fix it. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, just because you have a couple of days of profits doesn't, you know, take away all the years that you had of downfall. You're still in debt. Exactly. And it takes time to get out of debt. It's not a quick fix. That's true. Very true, honey. So you have to wonder... Uh, all the all the equipment is nice and all, and I'm sure what John means well. But it, wouldn't it be you know better if you just went the simpler way and just just new glasses or a new small machine rather than you know extravagant and elegant? And I understand what he's doing. Well, maybe I think a lot of their equipment seems to be outdated. A lot of these places, so he ends up replacing them. One bar, he I think he replaced the bar uh, floor. Not to be repetitive to something that was an old show, but yeah, in one of the shows, he replaced actually the bar floor, because the bar floor actually started to stink underneath. And and I'm understanding that, but to re, you know, uh, redo a place, it still costs money, and it's not like, you know, the producers of the show are saying, well, hey, I'm going to give somebody $100,000 to replace their bar, because really, do they care about it that much? And maybe he may get um, donations from people too. But he does run his own. The show. He does run his own company, you know, and he is a you know credential. So I'm not taking it out of you know no disrespect to John or anybody that he hires. Oh no, of course not. But the whole thing about the show, while it is legit, while he could save some, as you've seen in reviews and everything else, a lot of the places have closed down. But it's not really due to his fault. It's due to the fact of if it's a lemon to begin with. It's going to stay a lemon. Exactly. And not only that, but it also has to do with people not wanting to help themselves. And not wanting to adapt to change. And when John leaves, you know, they still have to, you know, have to have some kind of organization skills. Exactly. I mean, if I had a bar and John came in and helped me and said to me, here, I fixed your bar, changed the name, everything. I would be like, thank you, John, you know, very much for all the help. Now, can you help me learn how to upkeep my bar if I didn't know how to? I need a little help organizing it. And maybe once they show me some organization skills, maybe it would help me with my bar if I had one. Exactly. But you have to wonder, you know, like in like in any profession, somebody when they come to an emergency situation are gonna resort back to what they know. You have to retrain yourself to do things differently, and that's hard to do. Exactly. But if your business is flatlining, you have to make adjustments to change. Exactly. Exactly. Because it's still a business, even though you want to do this to help people out or help yourself and your friends and blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. It's still a business, and if it makes no profit, it just stays in debt. It's sad that some of these businesses go under, but, you know, what are you going to do? You, you know, you can't help people that won't help themselves. So, the moral of the story is, while, you know, we love, both love the show, I mean, I'm addicted to it. Every time that it comes on, I'm just sitting in front of the tube and just yeah, watching it, and I'm just amazed at the work he's done. You have to keep in mind that, in reality, things take time, things take effort, and if somebody's not willing to put 120% after being taught something to change, it will not, you know, prosper. Just because you had a few days of, you know, great work is wonderful, but once them top chefs 
and top management leave is down to you. And if you, you know, running your own business, and this is maybe a message to small business owners. Exactly. You know, you need to come up with your own game plan to keep it afloat and keep keep it from going sour. Exactly. My father owns his own business, so I know what goes into a business. I'm watching him from the time I was a small child, so I know what goes into a business. A lot of hard work. A lot of Real hard work. A lot work. of hard work. A lot of hard work. A lot of missed weekends, missed birthdays. Days, miss Christmas, miss, miss holidays, you know? You yeah. have to work. A bunch of dedication. It's just dedication, hard work, and for the most part, you know, the profits only come at after you know a certain amount of time even if you even if you remodeling it's going to take at least a year minimum to get out of debt let me tell you something my father moved from one place to another and for the first i think six months to a year he was still in debt for a while because he you know just started up this new uh, business in a new place actually the same business but in a new spot but you know it was still hard for him but eventually he made you know he started making more money and doing a little better. But in order to build the new rep after John is finished, he basically states two things. You're either going to follow what I just showed you, and you're going to prosper, which you're going to have to learn on your own, you know, from here on out. This is on you. Right. Or you just brought an expert in, and it's not salvageable, even with the remodel, regardless of the cost, and that is grounds for a health inspector or whoever it is to come by and shut your business down because it's not working. Exactly. At that point, if you don't have the right management, you need to change management. If you don't have the right workers, you need to retrain workers. Yep. It's not personal. It's business. And in a business... Exactly. If if you know that, well, your bus boys aren't doing what they're supposed to. Have somebody come in, pay the money, have them trained. Have your bartenders trained. Have your servers trained. Your cook something to help yourself. Exactly. And that is the point of it all. And we hope you enjoyed another edition of Stream Time brought to you by Teal Time Radio. Please feel free to check us out on Twitter, CT Jags, TealTimeRadio.com, on Amazon Marketplace under Google Apps, or you can donate if you'd like. Feel free to leave us a suggestion, feedback, or a comment on any of them locations or at info at tealtimeradio.com. Thank you so much. Have yourself a good night.